Well, call a meeting to order Thursday, oh no, Tuesday, <laughs> January 15th at uh, 4 p.m. St. Clair Metropolitan Transit Commission. Uh, um, let the uh, record reflect that all uh, everyone is represented uh, with the exception of Sartell. Uh, any additions or changes to the agenda? No. All right. Uh, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Uh, discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries the consent agenda, items five through eight. Vote to approve. Second. Approved. Second. Uh, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, carries the, the, or the consent agenda is adopted. Open forum. Um, don't see anybody that has signed up. Anyone here want to open up? <laughs> Let us hear your <laughs> no. All right. Well, then we'll move on to the uh, general business item number nine, consideration of the fiscal year 2019 final program of projects. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, we brought forward the um, proposed program of projects back in November. That was uh, had a comment period for a little over 30 days. I get ended up being like 40 something days, but. No, no comments. We were, we didn't receive any any feedback from that whatsoever. So we just need to get the final program of projects so that we can apply for the 2019 federal grant. And you had no input at all. None. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Uh, carries. Uh, adopted. Uh, Department updates, community outreach. A lot real slow. Uh, <laughs> no. Get it out or we'll. <clears throat> oh, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Good afternoon, commissioners. Thank you for inviting me to share a little bit about the successes that we had last year down at the Mobility and Training Center. Um, 2018, we welcomed 2,173 visitors coming into our site. Um, I gave examples of some of the people that are walking in the front door and asking questions about transportation and, and the services that might be offered within our service area. Most excitingly is um, when people new to the community stop in and uh, we had two seniors stop that new to the community they had one car and they were excited about utilizing public transportation they had ridden in other cities but they just didn't understand how to navigate our system so had an opportunity to sit down and open up a system map and they lived in they live out on west st germain on 22nd and west st germain so great service and we talked about the destinations that they'd want to travel to and, and they'll be out there using our bus. So they were excited to hear that we had such a, a great service for them to participate with. Um, St. Cloud Chamber leadership team has been working with us the, throughout the year. They every year have a, a leadership training. I think some of our staff have gone through that, young professionals. Um, riding the bus has always been part of their curriculum or learning they have a human service um, excerpt of their training this year though they're they're going to come down to the mobility and training center um, they were really excited about having seen that site and learning what the resources and learning more about the dial a ride in our travel training program um, we're going to get them on the bus then and then they head over to the salvation army and they come back but they'll bring in 30 30 to 40 professionals that you know can learn about our our youth that ride the bus for free, our dial-a-ride service, our, um, our reduced fare for those that have disabilities and our seniors. So it, it's just that network and that contact that um, we have through the Mobility Training Center. A high school student popped in um, the other day. She was new to the area. She's living in St. Cloud and open and rolling in Sauk Rapids. So you needs to utilize our, our buses to get to school. Uh, we often have um, sons or daughters visiting and, and they want to get their loved or their loved ones or their parents set up on dial a ride oftentimes they don't live in st cloud so they can come in we can fill out an application and we can discuss whether or not mom or dad are appropriate for our service 
And then we have people that come in um, and they learn about our Freedom Card. And they learn that because they're over the age of 65 or they have a disability, they can ride for that reduced fare. It's always fun when they pop in. Uh, 2018 um, also gave us new opportunities to connect with new support services and agencies that work with individuals that might utilize our service. So for some of these contacts, we're meeting annually, some of them quarterly, and some of them monthly. Um, new to our quarterly and monthly um, community outreach, I, I listed some of the, the new contacts. Um, when you look at this transitional housing up here, the Anna Marie's um, and Passages, unfortunately their doors are closing, Salvation Army, they have new residents and they have a 30-day turnover. So we go in once a month and we provide outreach and we explain to them, again, our services, how to read schedules and put our trips together and talk about our fair options. Um, we joined the Mid-Minnesota Transition Coalition this year and also Access to Food Committee. Um, and then we're also working very closely with our local employment service agencies. A great opportunity to figure out where when we expand, <coughs> Doug, that western corridor there, um, we're really seeing a need as to where the employment's um, need is and whether or not our services were able to get people to and from work. 2018, therefore, we provided 445 outreach activities. All that was higher than what you gave this morning. And we connected with over 4,000 people in talking about the services that we have to offer. <coughs> Here again is just kind of a, a clip, um, snippet of the different agencies and support services that we meet with. Like I said, annually, quarterly, and monthly. We're busy. We've got a team of, at times, five of us in-house. We, we meet at eight o'clock in the um, morning and we're often in, in five different directions throughout the community, so it's, it's good. Um, for those community outreach activities, one of the goals that our department had was to do some surveying to find out, are we really being effective? Is this worth our time to go into these transitional housing, to talk to people about how to ride the bus, breaking down those barriers of getting on for the first time? 99% said that the trainings were beneficial. Um, all of their questions were answered about riding the bus. And more importantly, that they would recommend our travel training and our services to others. So that was, that was a fun exercise that we did. 80% of the participants that we met with indicated that they're gonna be riding the bus four to, four to 10 times during the week. Um, again, that four to 10 times, that's coming out of our transitional housing. A lot of times people move into St. Cloud for services. They relocate, they stay here, and they're utilizing our public transportation. Our average group size for those transitional outreach activities is four to 10 people. We have 12 different sites that we monthly go into and do that for. Um, our travel training program, again, has been very successful this year. We, you guys, you know this, there's no new ones today, but new, new commissioners, but we do provide travel training to our seniors, those with disabilities, our youth, low-income, non-English speaking individuals and general public. Um, 2018, we had 715 travel trainings and we worked with 656 different individuals in teaching them how to ride the bus. Um, riding the bus more than 4,500 times. <laughs> so we're if they're, out there. If they're non-English speaking, do we have translators? Um, our first <coughs> avenue is to see if they might have a family member or um, child sometimes that can translate during the training for us. But yes, other, otherwise we hire a translator to come in. Typically, it only takes one training out with a translator and then it's just more modeling. We go out and show them different routes and where to get on the bus and things. But once we you know, talk about how to pay your fare and where to sit on the bus and signal to the staff and kind of the operations of our, our service, then, th then they're fine without a translator. We do have two uh, um, Somali, Somali travel trainers. Right, yeah, that yep. are 
bilingual. Yeah. But they could be any boy. I mean, they could be Spanish. They could Absolutely. be anything. Yep. And then so. we do the other. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And we we've worked with Arabic, <clears throat> Spanish, Cambo Cambodian, um, French. Um, Libby's not in the room. She signs off on my translation invoices. But just today, hands across the world, Brianda. Um, she, you know, typically they they are um, uh, a school for newly new arrival um, immigrants and refugees. And it was cute because um, she called. We have a voicemail set up in Somali um, that people can call and, and schedule their travel training. And St. Nevin and Sophia will, you know, call them back and set that training up. But she called and, and left a message for an individual. And St. Nev came up to me today and she said, Debbie, I don't understand this. This individual individual was Spanish speaking, so <laughs> I started the the investigation to find out if they had a child that could go with, or do we need a translator for that training coming up? Um, this is kind of a fun statistic, and I ran the numbers by Paula, so I think it's legit. But when you look at those 656 individuals, at least 35 would have been folks that would have applied for our dial a ride. All right, so they're they would have been riding our dial a ride three to five times a week because they're going from their home to a work site. Um, so if you take those 35 individuals off a of dial a ride, you're saving $1,000 per trip. If they're riding three times a week, that's close to $6,000. Over a year, that's 306,000. So if you compare the two, that's a $258,000 savings, okay, from fixed route to dial a ride. Right, so there's my department. We can keep growing. <laughs> yeah, so it's exciting. I explained to Paul a lot of the trainings that I've gone to. Um, they keep those statistics because it it just shows the um, significance of of giving people that opportunity to learn how to ride the fixed route bus. Um, again, so within our travel training program, the trend that we are seeing is folks are coming to us for travel training prior to applying for our dial ride service. Many of these um, individuals are referred to us by the support staff and agencies throughout our community. dial ride eligibility, we continue to be very busy um, in the applications coming in. Um, we average 40 a month, new applicants coming in. But with that being said, we have people that move out of our service area um, they no longer need our service, or we have a number of folks that start using dial ride on a temporary basis, and their physical um, abilities get better because they're on our service for a knee replacement or some type of a surgery, a relocation of a, of a shoulder, uh, or shoulder surgery, and so once they've rehabbed, they're able to go back to using the fixed route bus. But here are some statistics for our dial ride um, We had, 388 people come to the mobility training center, um, meet with our staff, and um, go through the interview process of determining elig eligibility. We, out of those 388, um, we had 348 that were unconditional. That means they came and they were approved to use dial right all the time. Um, 28 <coughs> of those are on a condition. So we ask that they use the fixed route when possible. Some of our conditions that we often see are during the winter time. We have a snow and ice. So if you have a gait and balance issue, um, you use the dial a ride during the winter time, but in the summertime, you're able to navigate the fixed route bus. Now, when somebody comes to us and is eligible for dial a ride, that also entitles them to ride at a reduced rate during our off peak hours. So it's, it's another carrot that, you know, we get out there, we travel train them on the fixed route. They've got more independence to use that fixed route bus. You know, they don't have to schedule the ride. They don't have to worry about changing their mind. On dial the ride you have to schedule 24 hours in advance. On the fixed route, you can wake up, it's a sunny day. If you have that ability and know how to ride, you can hop on the bus and go. We also um, scheduled 51 assessments in-house this year. Um, I, I gave a little total of the $6,375 savings. Prior to us having the Mobility Training Center, those 51 assessments would have been set up at Novacare where we um, hired out for those physical assessments and now we do all of that in-house. 
All right, another, another component of what we do down at the Mobility Training Center is um, we handle the past sales now and, and the um, schedule outlets throughout our community. I don't stand very still. Um, we average about 210 bus passes that are, are um, sent out of our facility. Those bus passes are paid for through co the counties, Benton, Stearns, and Sherburn. Um, we also have reimbursement from some insurance companies. What we're starting to see is that the insurance companies are looking at mobility management. Um, some of the medical assistance insurance companies provide transportation to and from medical appointments. So with that being said, some of these companies are looking to us and they're saying, we'll buy this individual if they have the ability to ride a fix, the fixed route bus, we'll pay for a 31 day bus pass for $47. They can go three times a week to and from their medical appointment, but it's also giving them the freedom to maintain a healthy lifestyle. They can go and buy their groceries, they can visit their friends, they can participate you know, in their church or whatever, in the community. Um, versus putting them on care cap, where you're paying $120 round trip for one trip to the doctor's office. So kind of a, an exciting time for this mobility management. Um, we also have apartment vouchers that we um, provide to our housing managers for our Section 8 and GRA housing, right? Is that right? Um, the the HRA. subsidized HRA and G, the HUD housing, um, HRA. Um, so when somebody moves into those apartment sites, um, if they're utilizing public transportation or they're interested in it, they get uh, some a 10 ride card and we encourage them to start riding the bus. And then along with that, we do have the 55 plus schedule outlets throughout our community that every month we go out and we have an opportunity to connect with those businesses and the people coming and going from those businesses to answer any questions they might have about riding the bus. That's it. <laughs> That's very good. That's yeah. Great job, yeah. Any questions? Oh, Still haven't seen any of you guys come down through our travel training program. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't get there, can we? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. I, I just got a call today from Wakosa, and um, this gal, her name was Debbie. And so I said, well, you must be a nice person if your name is Debbie. My name is Debbie. <laughs> and then we kind of equated the fact that we're probably the same age and whatever else. but. Um, she said, you know, I've worked for Wakosa forever and I've, and I've lived in this community and I've never ridden the bus. And I said, we need to change that. About, it's probably been five years ago, I've gone out to Wakosa and we, we train the trainer. We, tra we train the support staff. And she's like, oh, will you do that? Can I do that? Or can I go with the training and with her, her consumer next week? I said, absolutely. So we invite you to come along if you're interested. All right, that's good. Yeah, thank you. Very good. Any questions, comments, or all right? No. Well, then any other department updates before we move on to other? Or I have, I have one thing sure. to say. Yeah, um, I think most of us probably know that Ryan got nominated or was selected as one of the five under forty. Yes, it's shocked that he's under so, forty. Yeah, but we're <laughs> going to do a background check on his birth certificate. I can tell you that. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank Can we you. Even talk to him? I don't think there's many days left in that under forty thing. I had to run a and come back to his office. I almost searched me going in, in there to stop me. <laughs> they changed that date for eligibility just to get him in there. <laughs> well, thank you. No, very, very well deserved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, nice article too. Yeah. Thank you. The bus. Yep. Nice. Oh, that's great. Thanks. Any other updates that you have? Do you no, have a... Not at this time. Okay. Well, then. Um, we'll do adjourn. There's a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion carries. We are adjourned at 419.